Hello. What is a real Harley Davidson? Does a real Harley Davidson have to be heavy? Does it have to be loud? Does it have to be expensive? Does it have to be all shiny? I don't think so. If you ask me, what is a real Harley Davidson? Any motorcycle that carries a Harley Davidson badge made by Harley Davidson doesn't matter if it's made by Hero. <laughs> it's a Harley Davidson. They don't have to be big, heavy, shiny, expensive and loud, not at all. And those days are probably going away. We need to get more relevant with things. What can give people more joy? What can be accessible by more people? What are the models that can be bought? How can people enjoy a Harley Davidson more? Or rather, how can more people enjoy a Harley Davidson? I think we need to drop those notions of heavy, big, loud, shiny, expensive. Here's a Harley Davidson that can change all this. What do you think? Let me tell you what I think. There it is, the X440, Harley's attempt at getting into the growing hot mid-size segment. The 400cc is getting loaded with motorcycles from every manufacturer. Of course, Royal Enfield was the one that was dominating, still is. And then came the Honda with the 350 CB series to get into that segment. Triumph has gotten into it. And now Harley Davidson. This is not a comparison. It is just to give a relevance of how important this mid-size segment is to every brand across the world. Believe me, in a few years' time, there will be more manufacturers making 400s, 450s. That's the way ahead for the world. Time for the big, big bikes are over. Yes, there will be many still to buy those big, real Harley Davidsons, but that's limited. This is what is going to make the brand accessible to many people. Does it have the Harley Davidson character? Yes, the engine is very, very Harley Davidson. I had a Harley Davidson from 2013 to 16, a 1200 Sportster, and this reminds me of that Sportster. It's got that low thrum, the torque, the sound, the noise. There is something, there is a Harley DNA in this. Now, there's been a lot of criticism about this motorcycle. This doesn't look like Harley, this is fake, this is hero, this is rubbish, this is nonsense. So let's keep an open mind and please listen to what I have to share with you. This reminds me of the classic 500. I'm sure many of you have had a tryst with that legendary motorcycle. It was launched in 2009 or 10 and it changed the dynamics of the mid-sized motorcycles. It was quick, it was powerful, a lot of torque, bottom end, easy to ride, flickable, ride anywhere, go anywhere. Yes, it had a lot of limitations. Vibration is the biggest limiting factor. I just couldn't get my head around those vibes and invariably hands used to turn numb, but we didn't have anything else. We used to ride it. I had a maroon color classic 500. Second, handling was not great. Low speed, medium speed was okay. Once we get past the 90s, better hold on. The classic 500 will take you in the direction it wants to take you and not where you want it to go. Handling was poor. Reliability was not great. It used to break down. It used to have one issue or the other, frequent visits to the workshop. But that was the days. Those were the days. That's how things were. This to me is version 4.4 of the classic 500. Refined, reworked, great fit and finish, no vibrations. It is reliable, I'm sure it will be. Sounds great and it is eminently rideable. It can be flicked around in the city like riding a splendor. Believe me, take a test ride. There is nothing that I can say or marketing can say or the public can say or all the ads and the TVCs, there is nothing like taking a proper test ride on this motorcycle. That will give a pure feeling of what this stands for. This engine is so smooth, so refined. It revs so beautifully from idling all the way to 6,000 RPM. The meaty power band is between three to five. And 
you know what is the secret of this engine they didn't just come up with this from nowhere pluck it out of the sky this is one half of the 883 engine of the harley davidson 441.5 to be precise is one cylinder i think they lopped that 1.5 cc off and stuck in the internal combustions yes engines can be made to look different they can be designed differently color differently fins can be different whatever it is however the internals the combustion chamber is the critical aspect and this is straight off one cylinder of the 883 and it shows because it behaves the same way that low end grunt that mid range grunt and then that smooth tapering off at the top it doesn't get to a cliff and drop off like many motorcycles this kind of gradually drops down and i get to know it's done time to shift to another gear it is happy on highways between 90 and 110 super happy probably a top speed of 135 136 with i pushed it up to 130 and it was kind of running out of steam in the city this is a hoot this is more fun to ride in the city than the speed 400 or the scrambler 400 amazingly nimble the frame the chassis whatever they have done to it it is like a toy the balance is fantastic the braking is good because i tried to slam the rear brake to get the abs to engage i couldn't do that bike actually comes to a stop only on a place when there was some sand and slippery stuff on the road did the rear wheel tend to lock otherwise the bite is pretty good clutch very springy very progressive i could operate it with two fingers and did not feel any strain or pain even after several hours on the motorcycle yesterday i took it out 330 kilometers bangalore to melkote had a beautiful breakfast took a nice loop back i have not had so much fun on a thumper like i have done on this this reminded me of the classic 500 days maybe uh, 10 12 14 years ago where i had that classic 500 this is the feeling this is the emotion that it evoked this is a heart machine it evokes some emotion inside it's not it is not just a machine there is something about this motorcycle that makes me look around and enjoy the scenery much more once you buy this motorcycle i'm sure you'll forget what you paid for it in the sense it doesn't make sense anymore it doesn't matter anymore you will forget the delivery experience you will forget the specification sheets all that don't matter anymore what you will remember every day is how good you feel when you ride this motorcycle engine heat engine noise nothing much probably this is the coolest running engine among this segment apart from the cb350 which runs pretty cool and engine noise the mechanical noise very smooth it is close to the cb350 there is no valve train noise no click 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 clack 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 nothing much coming even after several hundreds of kilometers when the engine is fully nice and hot no noise came from the engine and in city traffic i did not feel much heat wafting up uh, over my legs and onto my upper body so heat management noise management excellent job suspension i would give it a 8 on 10 i am an adventure motorcycle buff so i like a lot of travel in the suspension however i can't expect it from this so with that in mind i give it an 8 the front usds do a great job the rear do a great job 330 km yesterday all kinds of roads i went on mixed roads road under construction mud there was even some slush because they were putting some water to prevent the road construction dust from flying about so there was a bit of slush there too handled all of that quite well and even at high speeds on the hasan highway i was hitting around 130 for quite a big stretch stable handling and suspension quite good brakes progressive front brake excellent rear brake it is not that the rear brakes bite it is just that they are very progressive and it was very difficult to lock up the rear wheel the vehicle comes to a stop before the rear wheel locks so that says a lot about the chassis dynamics and how they have balanced the braking and the suspension good job on that harley and hero after a 330 km ride yesterday from a cold morning to a hot afternoon there is one thing that stood out about this motorcycle that is its ability 
to retain its characteristic no matter the ambient uh, conditions it was cold in the morning 15 16 degrees and it was maybe 27 28 in the afternoon humid in the morning dry in the afternoon nothing much changed in this motorcycle it is a single air cooled 440 cc it didn't drastically start to throw out a lot of heat in the afternoon it didn't start to sound any different it didn't start to respond any differently it maintained its character so brilliantly well i do not recall any other motorcycle in this segment that has been able to do that every other motorcycle i have ridden behaves one way when it is cold and there is a change when it is warm and hot i don't know what harley and hero have done to it whatever they have done good job i am not very emotional about my motorcycles or cars i treat them as what they are take care of them mechanically make sure they are okay and fit enough for me to travel they are a tool in my journey i respect it however it is not a emotional bonding not at all for many it is an emotional bonding and that's okay because for tens of thousands of years humans have been traveling on horses and horses are living beings and the tendency was to develop a relationship with the horse a living being to another living being somehow that thing has trickled down into our automobile ownership people get emotionally connected to the motorcycle it is an inanimate object it has got no feelings however we foist our feelings on this and hence the bond develops a strong bond between a man and his machine <laughs> like they say <laughs> i don't have anything such however however when i was riding this motorcycle there was something about it that tickled some emotion some sentiment in me i don't know what it is maybe because i had a harley davidson long back and this is kind of reminding me of those great days of ownership of the harley maybe however yeah i did become a little bit of a sentimental old fool when riding this yesterday uh anyway that's another topic i am sure many of you have tried the cb350 the honda that's also a long stroke thumper the issue with that which i have is it's a mid range to top end that's not really a thumper is it a thumper has to have bottom end and mid range top end yeah okay we can let go of some top end but uh, without a bottom end it is not really a thumper and this is probably today in the market the definition of a long stroke single thumper dollops of power bottom end mid range yes tapers off at the top end and in the market what is the competition honda cb350 the royal enfields maybe the speed to an extent yeah the speed is just too revy too lively to contest in the thumper segment the 350 royal enfields j platforms are too slow no point the cb350 is quite difficult and painful to ride at slow speeds to slow to medium speeds this by far is the king of that segment ride it like i say i repeat it again there is nothing like a test ride take a test ride that will give you the best information about this motorcycle i think it's available in a lot of showroom these days so you should be able to find one at least if you're living in the bigger cities i am an adventure motorcycle buff i like the adventure motorcycles for their posture for their suspension and how they can go almost anywhere that i want to go however in my garage there is one little vacant space and this can fit in very well there right now no i don't have the time inclination nor the money to buy one of this i think i am going to start saving some the bottom line is if you are in the market looking for a retro thumper look no further i think this has revived that spirit which was there when the classic 500 was around this is what it has revived and it has revived it in a fantastic way take it as tried believe me you will plonk your money into buying one of this till next time take care
there is a connect like in avatar the noru and the tavik navik toru and toru 